Hello, this is Day 120 of Bible in One Year and the Bible text for today, 1 Kings chapters 8 to 9 and then Luke chapter 21 verses 1 to 19. Okay, so let's begin with the prayer. Lord, thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for the guidance, for the wisdom, for all the blessings, for the provision of our needs, for the health, safety, and protection, and of course, for salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and also I'd like to thank you for, you know, I was able to catch up with Bible in one year, finally recording during the right day, right? April 30, 2021. So thank you, Lord, and I pray that I would not, you know, experience this again. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, record every day again, starting tomorrow. And Lord, help me to be more faithful and to be more vision to your word. Help us, Lord, to uh, enlighten us as we read your word. Help us to understand your message. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness for our you know, shortcomings, our sins, our mistakes. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Thank you for this life. And please we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, First Kings chapter 8. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Athanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen, that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and they, and there are, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon, the Lord said, that he would dwell in deep darkness. I have surely built thee an house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about, and blessed all the congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spake with his mouth unto David my father, and had with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel, out of all the tribes of Israel, to build a house that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord had performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who givest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. 
Who hast kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him? Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified which thou speakest, and to thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. And yet thou respect unto the prayer, and yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, and they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven their dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. And if, if any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked, to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous, to give them according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people in Israel, that thou teach them the good way, wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, maldru, locust, and if there be caterpillar, if there any need besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all pe thy people, Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward his house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country to, for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, and he shall come and pray toward his house. Hear thou in heaven a dwelling place, and do according to all that a stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee as to thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. By thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto the Lord, toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sitteth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall betake themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. 
And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be opened unto the supplication of thy servant, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth, to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant. When thou broughtest our fathers, our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There had not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers, let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments, and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let their heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did, king, did the king hallow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings, and the, pot, the fat of the peace offerings, because the brass and altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings, and the meat offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a, held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath, and to the river of Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart, for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant, and for Israel his people. 1 Kings chapter 9 And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness, uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if he shall at all turn from following me, ye are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, every one that passeth it, passeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land, and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore had the Lord brought upon them all this evil. 
And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Now Hiram, the king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees, and with gold according to all his desire. That then King Solomon gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold, and this is the reason of the Levi which King Solomon raised, for to build the house of the Lord, and his own house, and Milio, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazor, and Megiddo, and Gezer. For Pharaoh king of Egypt had gone up, and taken Gezer, and burnt it with fire, and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city, and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gezer, and Beth Horon, the Nether, and Be Balat, and Tadmor in the wilderness, in the land. And all the cities of store that Solomon had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, their children that were left after them in the land. And the children of Israel also were not able to at able utterly to destroy. Upon those is Solomon Levi a tribute, a bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes and his captains and rulers of Gariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, five hundred and fifty, which bare rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Melia. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar, which he built unto the Lord, and he burnt incense upon the altar, that was before the Lord. So he finished the house. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Zion Gabir, which is beside Elat on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Adam. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold four hundred and twenty talents and brought it to King Solomon. Okay, we now go to Luke chapter 21 and read verses 1 to 19. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites, and he said, Of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow had cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury had cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As far these things which ye behold, the days will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. 
And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Alright, we're done with our Bible reading for today, day 120. And for the reflection or something to share, um, I think I'd like to focus on, you know, the women, the widow who put in two mites. Um, the thing is, you know, Christians and non-Christians alike, it's easy for us to give when we have many, when we are in abundance. But, you know, in times that we are in need as well, we find it really hard to give. Because we feel that, you know, we might have use for it, we might, you know, use it first before giving to others. But, um, what God wants us to learn is that we should be faithful and we should trust in the Lord that when we give, when we are faithful in what we must do, you know, giving our tithe, supporting the work of God, then, you know, regardless of whether we have or not, you know, if we have abundance or not, or if we are having difficulties as well, what God wants is for us to be faithful and to trust Him and that as long as we give what we should give for the Lord, then He would also provide for our needs, right? There are those verses, right, that, you know, uh, God will provide, okay? I've, I've experienced that many times before, you know, in the past, that God will really provide if you have nothing else, and but you are still faithful in your giving, then God will really provide all your needs, right? And it's nice to experience it as because you know it's another display that there is really god god really exists and god has been listening god knows what we're going through and god is faithful to us and god would not forsake us and he would help us whenever we are in need of him and it's a good thing to experience and that's it for this one again this is day 120 a bible in one year and we've read first kings chapters 8 to 9 and then luke chapter 21 Verses 1 to 90. Thank you and God bless.